the, uh, on the topic of sort of uh, the greater degrees of complexity emerging in consciousness, I think few things are as beautiful and inspiring as taking a step outside of the human brain, just looking at systems where simple rules create incredible complexity, uh, not create, incredible complexity emerges. So um, w one of the simplest things to do that with is uh, cellular automata. And th there's, I don't know what it is, and maybe you can speak to it. We can certainly, we will certainly talk about the implications of this, but there's so few things that are as awe-inspiring to me as knowing the rules of a system and not being able to predict what the heck it looks like. And it creates incredibly beautiful complexity that when zoomed out on, looks like there's actual organisms doing things that are much, uh, that, that operate on a scale much higher than the underlying mechanism. So with cellular automata, that's cells that are born and die, born or die, and they only know about each other's neighbors. And there's simple rules that govern that interaction of birth and death. And then they create, at scale, organisms that look like they take up hundreds or thousands of cells, and they're moving. They're moving around, they're communicating, they're sending signals to each other. And you forget at moments at a time before you remember that the simple rules on cells is all that it took to create that. That's, it's sad in that we can't come up with a simple description of that system that generalizes the behavior of the large organisms. We can only come up, we can only hope to come up with the thing, the fundamental physics or the fundamental rules of that system, I suppose. It's sad that we can't predict. Everything we know about the mathematics of those systems, it seems like we can't really in a nice way, like economics tries to do, to predict how this whole thing will unroll. But it's beautiful because of how simple it is underneath it all. So what do you make of uh, the emergence of complexity from simple rules? What the hell is that about? Yeah. Well, we can see that something like flocking behavior, the murmuration, can can be computer coded. It's not a very hard set of rules to be able to see some of those really amazing types of complexity. And the whole field of complexity science and some of the sub-disciplines like Stigmergy are, are studying how following fairly simple responses to a pheromone signal, do ant colonies do this amazing thing where the what, what you might describe as the organizational or computational capacity of the colony is so profound relative to what each individual um, ant is doing. I am not um, anywhere near as well versed in the cutting edge of cellular automata as I would like. Unfortunately, I, in terms of topics that I would like to get to and haven't like uh, ETs more, um, Wolfram's a new kind of science. I have only skimmed and read reviews of and not read the whole thing or his newer work since. Um, but his idea of the four basic kind of categories of uh, emergent phenomena that can come from cellular automata and that one of them is kind of interesting and looks a lot like complexity rather than just uh, chaos or homogeneity or um, self-termination or whatever. I think this is very interesting. It does not instantly make me think that uh, biology is operating on a similarly small set of rules and or that human consciousness is. I'm, I'm not that reductionistly oriented. And uh, so if you look at, say, Santa Fe Institute, one of the co-founders, Stuart Kaufman, um, his work, he should, you should really get him on your show. So uh, a lot of the questions that you like, one of Kaufman's you know, more recent books after investigations and some of the real fundamental stuff was called Reinventing the Sacred. And it had to do with some of these exact questions uh, in kind of non-reductionist approach, but that is not just silly hippie-ism. Um, and he was very interested in highly non-ergotic systems where you couldn't take a lot of behavior over a small period of time and predict what the behavior of subsets over a longer period of time would do. Um, and then going further, someone who spent some time at Santa Fe Institute and then kind of made a whole new field that you should have on, uh, Dave Snowden, mm -hmm. who 
some people call the father of anthro complexity or what is the complexity unique to humans. Uh, he says something to the effect of that modeling humans as termites really doesn't cut it. Like we, we, we don't respond exactly identically to the same pheromone stimulus using stigmergy. Like it works for flows of traffic and some very simple human behaviors, but it really doesn't work for trying to make sense of the Sistine Chapel and Picasso and general relativity creation and stuff like that. And it's because the, the termites are not doing abstraction, forecasting deep into the future and making choices now based on forecasts of the future, not just adaptive signals in the moment and evolutionary code from history. That's really different, right? Like making choices now that can factor deep modeling of the future. Um, and with humans, our uniqueness one to the next in terms of response to similar stimuli is much higher than it is with a termite. Um, one of the interesting things there is that their uniqueness is extremely low. They're basically fungible within a class, right? There's different classes, but within a class, they're basically fungible. And their system uses that very high numbers and lots of um, loss, right? Lots Wait, do you of think death the termite loss. feels that way? Don't, don't you think we humans are deceiving ourselves about our uniqueness? Perhaps it doesn't it just, isn't there some sense in which this emergence just creates different higher and higher levels of abstraction where every at every layer, each organism feels unique? Is that possible? That we're all equally dumb, but at different scales? No, I think uniqueness is evolving. Hmm. I think that hydrogen atoms are more similar to each other than cells of the same type are. And I think that cells are more similar to each other than humans are. And I think that highly K-selected species are more unique than our selected species. So they're different evolutionary processes. The our selected species where you have a whole a lot of death and very high birth rates, you're not looking for as much individuality within or individual possible expression to cover the evolutionary search space within an individual. You're looking at it more in terms of a numbers game. Um, so yeah, I would say there's probably more difference between one orca and the next than there is between one Cape buff buffalo and the next.